Hello and welcome to not a pastor chat, actually. This is a little bit different. I'm just doing programming uh, for next week. And I've had a thought about, I have a theory um, and I wanted to, to talk about it. I think it might be useful to someone. Um, I've not, obviously, again, I've not fully, I've not prepared this at all. So I'm just going to speak and, you know, I'm not scripted at all. But I've had this theory for a while. Uh, I've spoken to Christopher Speed. About it, I've spoken to my good friend Alex Burbridge, um, who was going to be a physio, and my very good friend Andreas, who is an ex-weightlifter, um, a good friend of mine. We have a lot of philosophical discussions, and it's a theory about rehab um, in certain people. So, my theory is, if you did a sport to a very high level. A pretty high level, to be fair, it has to be to a very decently high level. Probably uh, an, an individual sport, and this was if you did this when you were a kid. So things like track and field, swimming, diving, um, like even things like boxing, um, you know, martial arts kind of sports. Not things like rugby, football. It doesn't. This doesn't really apply to to team sports, hockey. You know, maybe even cricket, something like that. Where and I know it's not a team sport. I know it's a team sport, but it's 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 quite individual roles. Um, if you did that and then you switch sport to, so let's say weightlifting when you kind of were at uni like me, maybe you're, uh, you know, slightly older, you, you know, picked up CrossFit and then got into weightlifting. When you get injured in those sports, the new sports, the weightlifting, doing, going back and not necessarily training to be, so my example was either 100 meters and triple jump, so sprinting, track and field and jumping. Not necessarily training like a sprinter again, but doing the sprint drills again and training a little bit more like you used to as a kid has a restorative rehabilitation effect on the body that's a lot stronger than classic models. Now, bear in mind, I'm not clinically trained. I'm not clinically trained at all. This is purely from experience, um, and I've spoken to a lot of people, and they've said they experienced the same thing. Now. I'm not saying that this this is why it wouldn't happen in team sports if you get injured in weightlifting and go back to your childhood love, which is rugby, and then get crushed by a 20 stone prop. It might not help you. But the reasons are this. I believe the body, if you've done it, so I did sprinting since I was about 13, um, 12, 13 for about six years, uh, heavily before I switched to weightlifting. During that those key times in your development, going through puberty, etc. The body adapts to the specific demands. So, for example, sprinting. Now, for me, that meant hamstrings, hip flexors got really strong. Hamstrings and hip flexors got really strong um, and powerful uh, um, under, under high velocity stress. When you then switch to weightlifting, you'll find that you don't use your hip flexors that much. Um, and you don't really move the, you don't use the hamstrings as much in the sense of you don't use the hamstrings in their fully uh, kind of hyper extended position, like you would say in sprinting, uh, where the hip is incredibly extended, not just slight extension, it's way past the midline. And you don't really use a flex and weight at all, um, especially not dynamically. The now, I'm not saying that if you do sprinting, you're a perfect athlete, but your body adapts to that demand, and that's its kind of baseline, and it becomes suited to that sport. I, when I left sprinting, had incredible lumbolidosis, probably from sprinting, uh, lack of kind of core engagement, but overused hip flexors and hamstrings. Now, I'm not saying that, obviously that's not great, but that was my baseline. Then started having a lot of lower back issues, um, probably when I started weightlifting, because all the load was going through that. As soon as I do a couple of sprint drills again, activate my hip flexors and hamstrings, the pain goes away quite quickly. Now, the same things happened recently, had a sciatica. Obviously I am full-time weightlifter now, I'm not, I have no intention to go back to sprinting. I still love it, uh, I still love doing the drills. It gives me a sense of freedom, it gives me a sense of happiness. There, uh, sorry, I had sciatica recently. I'm only one or two days into a new kind of standard program thinking, oh, I'm going to train a little bit more, I can actually a little bit more power stuff, uh, not just weightlifting, weightlifting, weightlifting. 
and it's been incredibly successful so far. My pain has gone down dr- dramatically, um, not just while training, but kind of waking up in the morning, um, going around the house. And again, I have a few reasons why. You reactivate the muscles that get you in that baseline position, uh, get in, kind of in that baseline body. Um, that's what you're used to. Um, and that's what your body thrives off because it's developed for so long during that key developmental stage. And the last thing, the most important thing I would say, is it gives you that sense of joy and movement where you can feel like a kid again, feel like maybe you have less stress. But I believe the endorphin rush that you might get from switching up and doing something slightly different, something that you used to love, something that if you're like me, your that first sport that you did was essentially your first love. My first love was triple jump. And it will always be my first love, my first passion in sport. So it's finding that passion again. Now, obviously, weightlifting is my passion now. But the um, the initial passion was weight, uh, was track and field stuff. So when I get the chance to do that again, it's incredible. This rush of endorphins flushes over me. I feel unbelievable. I feel confident. I feel like I've worked in muscles that I, I you know, my, I feel my hip flexors again. I think, oh, suddenly I feel a lot more stable kind of around the hips a lot less broken um and obviously again things like blood flow um, um and i think the repetitive skill element of those individual sports be it sprinting swimming boxing um and the very little environmental impact as in if you run a 100 meter race it's fully under your control um it's the same conditions for everyone it's not like a 100 meter uh, it's not like a, a rugby game where Yes, you can execute a perfect pass, but people are coming at you at different angles and that change all the time. The environmental stimuli is so high that you can't just focus on your body. You have to focus on everything else. The Doing these individual sports again... Now, don't get me wrong, obviously, weightlifting is an individual, individual sport. I'm just using that as an example because that was my second big passion sport. It could be if I was a rugby player now, for example, and I was getting injured. Going back to that individual sport... Um, where you can just fully focus on your body, nothing else really matters. Um, I don't know if it's some kind of mind-muscle connection thing where you just feel the muscles working again and it gives you that sense of joy. Now, I've spoken to a few people about this. Um, A couple of people who used to be swimmers, I seem to know a lot of people who used to be swimmers, they all fully agree and say that whenever they go back and do swimming, they just feel mentally, physically refreshed. And that really helps kickstart their rehab. Um, there's nothing worse than when you're just consistently getting, like in weightlifting, for example, consistently getting injured in weightlifting, and the rehab plan is, uh, you know, 50% snatches. And it's like, well, it's great that I can do it again. It's super light, which is the more kind of demoralizing for some people. But it might also just aggravate the injury that you already had um, that was probably caused by snatches, for example. So... If the rehab plan was just movement that didn't hurt, you might pick something more um, different. And because you might, so for example, my go-to is the sprinting stuff because I know it very well. If I was a swimmer, I might think, oh yeah, I'll go in the pool. Like, obviously, currently nothing gives me, I, I, I don't want to swim because I've never, never been a swimmer. I hate it. <laughs> but for me, it's getting on the track and doing some kind of sprint stuff. Um, so like I say, it's, it's obviously it's just a theory. I'm never going to try and prove it. Um, because I don't want to, I don't have the time. Obviously, there'll be people that disagree, there'll be people that agree with it in some sense. Um, you just It's just to make you think, have a critical have, have a critical think about it. The It would be hard to prove, it'd be really hard to prove um, and not say, it. I think it would be easy to prove that it's a mental benefit, uh, but I think it would be quite hard to prove that it has any physical uh, benefit at all. I'm sure someone could explain it better. Someone, if they actually planned this out, they might be able to explain it better. Uh, you know, there's obviously in rehab, there's many other factors. It's not just this. There's many, many other factors that you probably all are aware of. It's just a theory that I've had. I keep coming back to it, and at some point I might try and build on it in some way. But, yeah, I, I, I do genuinely believe it. I really do. I really do believe it, I think. Whenever I come back to, don't get me wrong, like if I go back to sprinting for four, for, for like four months, I'm not going to become a better weightlifter. I, I might become a better athlete, which might help my weightlifting, but I'm not going to potentially be a better weightlifter. Um, 
I do believe in frequency, uh, you know, more than most things. I think there's a limit, uh, and I think the, everyone's limit is different. This is, it's an interesting topic. Um, I would like to hear people's opinions on it, not on YouTube, because I don't check the comments. So if you have an opinion, message me. Only people that watch this know me personally, so <laughs> message me. Be interested to hear other people's thoughts. Um, I think we could have a good discussion about this. But I, yeah, I, so it, it, in summary, I'm just going to say that I think it works the muscles that you're developed uh, that, that kind of support you the most because they were the ones that were developed so much when in that developmental phase of let's say PB. Now, obviously, these conditions have to be quite specific. Like you have to have done that sport for a long time at that age um, for this to be applicable. Um, it's a case study, essentially. It's a case study that I've asked a few people about and they've agreed with me. The, po the mental benefits of going back to that first sport completely with no stress, with no pressure, more than anything. If when I go back to sprinting drills, I know that I'm not competing anytime soon. I am just doing it for fun. Um, so it takes away that kind of mental pressure. Uh, and what was the other one? That's pretty much it. Endorphin rush. Um, switch it up. Variation. We know that's good. Um, you know, blood flow. Um, switch it up. Yeah, essentially. The relaxation it gives you um, might be restorative. Might be restorative. Um, is that the right word? Yeah. The... That's it, I think. So if anyone's got any questions or any queries or anything, let me know. Uh, would love to hear people's thoughts on that. The I'm going to call it the theory of... What can we call it? The, the, the theory of initial passion rehabilitation. <laughs> Something like that.